Hey guys, welcome to this course on memories in VLSI. Memory is the data storage part or element of an integrated circuit or an SOC or system on chip. The majority of the transistors used in integrated circuits are basically for memories. The remaining small part is for other logic and functionality. So without wasting time, let's get started with the introduction to memories in VLSI. There are three main functionalities of any computing system. Number one is processing. It transforms the data. So that transformation will be carried out by processors. The second functionality is storage. The data needs to be stored for temporary purpose as well as permanent purposes in something called memory. And the third functionality is basically communication. So the data has to be transferred between the elements of the processor or outside the processor between different chips or to outside maybe internet so that will happen through buses so essentially the storage is a very important part of computing system the data will be stored in memory as bits which are actually the short form of binary digits so these are viewed as M words of N bits each. I want you to remember this carefully. M is for the referring of words and N is for the referring of bits for a total of M by N bits. Don't call it as M cross N or M star N. It is M by N bits. So usually we always call uh, M by N bits as M by N bits. Okay, it's not M cross N. So for example, we can call it as 128 by 8 memory where each word will contain 8 bits of memory which is now usually how the data will be stored that earlier it was stored as nibbles which are actually 4 bits but now the data will be stored as 8 bits which is 1 byte and it need not be 8 bits always it can be 16 bits or it can be 32 bits it can be any number which is of 2 power right to access these memories we need something called as address signal right so how many address bits we need is the question so if we have k address inputs we will be able to access 2 power k words the decoder will have always n inputs and 2 power n outputs right so this is what it is so in order to calculate the total number of bits that are needed for address we will have to do lock to the base 2 m which is where m is nothing but word right the size of word so for example for the above uh, memory which is 128 cross 8 memory we will have to have seven address bits because 2 power 7 is basically 128 right and it stores one byte in a word which is 8 bits and total if you multiply these two you will get 1024 bits that's the number of bits that this memory can store which is 128 by 8 memory so memory access refers to either read or write so we can say memory access but it should be uh, it can be either read or write memory that can be both read and written uh, needs something called as a control pin which is control pin for read and write so this enable or disable will completely disable the re access to the memory but read or write signal is nothing but is the signal which refers to what kind of operation the memory has to do right now whether it's reading or writing right so the outputs are represented here which are q0 q1 so on to q and minus 1 the total n bits over here and one more important thing is the combination of read write signal the enable signal and the address signals are combined and they are actually called as a port of the memory okay a port represents these three signals together okay so this memory which i have shown here is a single port memory where you have single set of read write enable and also the address signals but you can have multi-port memories as well where it supports multiple access to different locations simultaneously these memories will have multiple control lines and address lines 
memory has evolved very rapidly over the past few decades. There are different and multiple types of memories being invented and we will have a range of memory starting from very slow memory and very fast memory and they have their own trade-off. You can consider a slow memory but that memory may have higher density, right? So those are the factors that are uh, playing today. So for a particular application, you may want to use a particular type of memory which will exactly fit into that uh, application. So why can't we use the basic memory cells such as latches or flip-flops everywhere? This is our question. Why do we have so many uh, types of memory? Well, these are the fastest memories that we have, latches or flip-flops, but we will always have a trade-off, as I said, that a flip-flop will need a lot of area. We don't want to spend so much of area in integrated circuit because it is extremely costly. So in order to have very dense structure, we will go to different types of memories and in order to make it more robust and uh, powerful and also to make low power devices, we need to go for different techniques. So we will discuss all these things uh, we will discuss more basic terms in the further videos and we will go to classification later. That's all for this video of introduction to memories in VLSI. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.